Okay, algebra one, lesson 3.1, solving literal equations. So you might say, well, what is a literal equation? Well, it's an equation that has multiple variables. So there are multiple variables in a literal equation. Uh, that might cause you to say, well, how do you know which one to solve for? Well, we'll tell you. We'll tell you which variable you're going to solve for. So here's the reality. Solve literal equations just like all others. You simply isolate the variable you're solving for. Isolate the variable you are solving for. So don't worry about the literal equation. We'll tell you which variable to solve for, and you're just going to solve for it. You might say, well, how in the world do I do that? Let's look at this first example. Pretty simplistic. We've got a physics formula here. Actually, chemistry, PV equals NRT. And uh, P is actually the pressure in this formula. V is the volume. N is the number of moles, all right? No, not the ones in my front yard that are killing my lawn constantly. A uh, mole is a measure, like a dozen is 12. Mole is 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm sure you were dying to, to know that. Uh, R is a constant, constant of proportionality for this formula, and T is the temperature. Really, basically, you have pressure, volume, and temperature related to the amount of a substance. All right, you don't need to know any of that. It's just on the side. Uh, if you're told to solve for V, then we're going to solve for V. And so we have to isolate the V. We have to get the V all by itself on one side of the equal sign. Now, it's already on the left. And, you know, basic stuff. We've got a left side. We've got a right side. And, uh, hey, we got to move the P. And so your next thought should be, all right, so what is the P doing to the V? Is it being added to the variable? Is it being multiplied times the variable? And you would say it's being multiplied. Okay, great. And then how would you move it? Shortcut, divide both sides by P, right? And you know what? That's it. That's all there is to this one. We end up with volume equals NRT over P. That's it. That's all there is to it. That's all there is in this one. Pretty simplistic. Okay, and that would be your answer. So now if you wanted to find the volume of a certain substance, you would put in N, the number of moles that you have, uh, the constant of proportionality, the temperature, and the pressure. And you can figure out the volume, which tells you volume is dependent upon pressure and temperature. And it is. Okay, here's a very uh, important formula, Y equals MX plus B. And this is the slope-intercept form of a linear function. Really, really, really important formula. M is the slope. We'll deal with this a lot later on. The slope is uh, the vertical change of a line divided by its horizontal change, its rise over its run. All right, so we want to solve for M. So again, I'm just going to take my red and circle my variable. Okay. So my variable's on the right-hand side, so I need to move the x to the other side and the b to the other side. And we all know this. When things are both added to and multiplied times a variable, which one do you move first? And in 99% of the cases, move that which is added to the variable first. Easiest way to go. And how do you move it? And we already know by adding its opposite to both sides, right? So the B is added to the variable. Let's move it by adding its opposite to both sides. And again, algebra two, we don't necessarily have to show each of these steps. I'm just trying to be clear for your sake as we're trying to figure out what to do. Okay, now, how are we gonna move that X? We're gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Uh, there is a shortcut we can do here. We can divide by X. Remember, we're solving for M, so we want to leave the M there. So you can do this, divide by X, and that's going to leave you this form, Y minus B over X, which, by the way, is the same as Y over X minus B over X. When we really get into slopes and y-intercepts, that's going to be the better form. For right now, you can leave it in that kind of form, okay? But that's how you split it up, and that's how you uh, 
that's how that should look. Now, let me show you one other thing here. All right, let me look on the look right in this square here. Here was where we were at y minus b equals m over x. Now, what if I didn't do the shortcut? What if I actually both multiply both sides by 1 over x, the reciprocal, right? So I need a parentheses on this side to do 1 over x. And I would now have to distribute, correct? What's 1 over x times a y? y over x. What's a 1 over x times a negative b? A negative 1b or negative b over x. You see how we ended up at this form. Okay. So how did I get uh, initially from here to there? It's just a simple fact of this denominator has to go underneath each term. All right, we'll talk more about that uh, often. So that'll come up a lot and we'll deal with it uh, quite, quite often. All right, let's take a look at this uh, next example. So number four, P equals 2L plus 2W. This is a perimeter formula. And we're going to solve for L. This is real similar to the previous problem. So we want L. Again, we're going to move the 2 that's multiplied times the L and the positive 2W that's added to the L. So how would you move the 2W? What would you think? How do you move the 2W? And hopefully you say, hey, I just added a negative 2W to both sides, right? That's all you're doing. So now we got P minus 2W equals 2L. And again, how do we move that 2? And most students prefer doing this route. Just put it directly underneath both. Okay, we end up with L on the right. P over 2 is P over 2. But on the right-hand side, you can reduce minus W. And that's a decent form to leave that equation in. So the perimeter divided by 2 minus the width will give you the length. That is the formula. All right, number 5 is the area of a triangle formula. And uh, you hopefully you have that memorized. 1 half base times height. Height is also called the altitude. So if they ever ask you for the altitude, they're asking you for H. And here's the H right here. So on this one, is there anything added to the variable? And the answer is no. You have a half times B times H. So you have a half times B times H. So this is real simplistic. We're already ready to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So this is what we have to move, right? And let me put the B over 1 just to make things clear. So what's the reciprocal of a half? 2 over 1. What's the reciprocal of B? 1 over B. That's what we're going to multiply both sides by. 2 over 1 times 1 over B. Now really, if, if you know what you're doing and, and you see the math clearly, then you understand the right-hand side is a B over 2, and you multiply both sides by 2 over B. But isn't this 2 over B? Sure. Isn't this 2 over B? What's 2 times 1? 2. What's 1 times B? B. 2 over B, right? So, but if you don't see it clearly, you can do the reciprocal of the half, 2 over 1, reciprocal of the B, 1 over B. All right. So let's look at the left-hand side. 2 times 1 times area is 2 times the area. And 1 times B is B. And that's going to equal the height. And there it is. You've got the formula for figuring out the altitude of a triangle. Okay? All right, a couple more. I'm going to solve this for Z. And I can see that's supposed to be a normal size Z there. So um, don't let that throw you off. All right, here is the case. We have the variable, the Z, on both sides. Well, look. How did you solve equations before with variables on both sides? You decided to move all the variables to one side first, right? All right, so do you want to move the 2z from the left to the right? Or do you want to move the 9, the negative 9z from the right to the left? Well, you know me. I always like to end up with a positive variable. So I'm going to add a positive 9z to both sides, right? And we end up with 3n on the left plus 11z 
right? Equals a n. Okay. Now, what would you do next? What would you move? Remember, we are solving for z. We are going to isolate the z. So hopefully you say, hey, let's add a negative 3n to both sides. Let's move the 3n. Now we're at left with 11z on the left. You have a n minus 3n. Now, they're both n's, and we could have added them. The only problem is you can't add an a and a negative 3. So it's just got to stay a n minus 3n. Again, with the 11, you can look at this and say, you can put the 11 under each, or you can put the whole thing um, over 11, right? In this one, am I going to be able to reduce the 11 into either side? And the answer is no. So some would say, hey, that's the better form. Do it that way. I'll show you in the end here the other way. You could have done it. Either way is acceptable. So a n minus 3 n over 11. That's fine. You also could have said that z equals a n divided by 11 minus 3 n divided by 11. Now, again, neither of those would reduce, but those two are exactly the same, a little bit different form, and both forms are acceptable. Okay? The exact same thing, a little bit different form, both forms are acceptable. All right, we've got one more. Do we? It's the same problem, isn't it? That's the exact same problem. I don't know what happened. Oh, we're solving for n. Okay, I was thinking, what did I do here? I'm doing the same problem. All right. This one's a little bit interesting. This one is a little bit interesting. All right, we're going to solve the same problem for n. Let me go all the way up to the top. Okay, so I still have that choice. Do I want to move the 3n from the left to the right? All right. Or do I want to move the a n from the right to the left? Either way, it, it, it's about the same. Six to one, half dozen the other. So I'm going to add a negative a n to both sides. Now here's our issue. Again, we can't add a 3 n and a negative a n. So it's just 3 n minus a n. Still have plus the 2 z, that ginormous z, equals negative 9 z. Okay. Let's isolate the ends. We know we got to add a negative 2z to both sides, right? So here's where we're at. 3n minus a n equals a negative 9 of them and two more negatives of them, a negative 11 of them, right? A negative 11z. Now, what do I do from here? How do I get to the variable? Okay, look off to the right. Look right in here. I'm going to remind you of something. A times the quantity B plus C equals, I'm going to distribute, right? AB plus AC. Distributed property, we've used it a ton, right? This, let me get my purple here. So this right here, what if we went backwards to that? See the A here and the A here? And we can take that A out and stick it in front, leaving a parentheses for the B plus the C, the black part. See that? All right. The difference here is the common thing is in the back. So let me use my red here. Here's an N and here's an N. And this is called factoring, or it's the distributive property in reverse. I'm going to take that n and put it out front. Now, what is left? The 3 minus the a equals negative 11z. Now, if you want to check yourself, remember, you can always distribute. You should get back to the original. What's n times 3? 3n. What's n times negative a? A negative a n right okay so it, so that's true now, i know you say mr scarfy i would have never known to do this i know that's why i'm showing it to you right i know you would have never thought of it that's why i'm showing it to you again this is a another step up level type of problem and so we're going to factor to do it we're going to factor out the common n which is simply the distributive property in reverse okay 
Now, isn't this multiplied times our variable? We can multiply both sides by the reciprocal, or we can do the shortcut. We can divide both sides by 3 minus a. That'll cause these to divide out, and lo and behold, our variable is isolated. And we end up with a negative 11z over 3 minus a. And that's it. As far as you're going to go with that one, hey, that's tricky, I know, but doable. So look, literal equations. Don't spaz out on them. They're not really that bad. They are simply equations where you're going to isolate the variable. How are you going to move stuff away from the variable so you can isolate it? Things added to the variable move first. How do you move them? Add their opposite to both sides. Things multiply times the variable. Move by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal or do the shortcut of division. Hey, that's it. A few things. Not so tough. And so see how you do with that. Um, hey, just be aware. Let me throw one more quick thing at you here before I let you go. Uh, what if you had something like this? How about uh, uh, 3n plus q minus uh, 5n equals 8? Okay, so you're going to add a negative q to both sides, right? And the right-hand side is going to be 8 minus q, right? Well, what would you do here? Well, this is just going to be adding like terms, right? Sometimes you'll still add like terms. 3n minus 5n is a negative 2n, right? Oh, this was a good one to show you. So we're going to divide by negative 2. Now look, can an 8 be divided by 2? You can, so I'm going to separate this one. And the other thing I'm dealing with is don't leave negatives in the denominator, right? Okay, so look where we end up here. On the left-hand side, you have the n isolated. What's a positive 8 divided by a negative 2? You guys know that's a negative 4. What's a positive divided, or what's a negative divided by a negative? It's a positive. And so the answer is n equals negative 4 plus q over 2. All right, a little weird. But uh, don't let something like that throw you off either. Okay, that's the lesson. Remember, homework will be done in class tomorrow. I hope you have a great night.